The question often arises, can you really eliminate thrust blocks using joint restraint? This video will provide you with the information needed for you to realize the answer to that question is yes. For many years, thrust blocks have been successfully used in distribution systems all over the world. Thrust blocks, however, are not without limitations. It has been argued that thrust blocks are the cheapest form of pipeline restraint. When all the costs such as labor, forming time, and waiting for concrete to be poured and cure are added to the price of the concrete, the thrust block is not as cheap as originally thought. A thrust block prevents separation of joints and pipe movement by transferring the resultant force at a fitting, such as a bend, to the undisturbed soil behind the thrust block. The bearing strength of the soil behind the thrust block must engage enough soil to resist the resultant thrust force at a change in direction. A properly designed thrust block involves much more than dumping a load of concrete behind a bend. The design involves consideration of undisturbed soil, soil bearing strength, test pressure, pipe size, fitting configuration, and trench depth to determine the bearing area of the thrust block. It is then a matter for the installer to form up and pour the proper block. Care needs to be taken to prevent the concrete from covering the joints at fittings, the weep holes in hydrants, and operating mechanisms of valves. Once the thrust block has been properly designed and properly formed, a concrete truck must be called to the site to pour the concrete. Now, the waiting begins. Only after the concrete has cured can the pipeline be charged with water and tested. We have only discussed horizontal fittings. When complicated bend combinations, vertical down bends, parallel lines, bed ends, and future excavation possibilities become involved, the use of thrust blocks becomes very problematic. A professionally designed restrained pipeline uses the bearing strength and frictional resistance of the soil, essentially, to turn the pipeline into a thrust block. The same basic parameters required to determine the size of a thrust block are used to determine the amount of pipe that must be restrained to resist thrust forces underground. These parameters are pipe size, pipe type, test pressure, fitting type, trench type, depth of bury, soil type, and safety factor. With this information and the various design equations, it is possible to quickly and simply calculate the length of piping that must be restrained. Using joint restraints opens possibilities that are not available with thrust blocks. When construction is required in congested underground areas, it is next to impossible to pour thrust blocks without interfering with other utilities. Also, the use of thrust blocks in congested areas poses a particular problem when construction or maintenance of a different utility occurs in close proximity to the thrust block. If the soil behind the thrust block is disturbed, or if the block is thought to be a rock that needs to be removed, the pipeline fitting can be separated from the line, resulting in loss of water, property damage, delays, and other costly side effects. Restrained pipelines can be installed in congested areas without affecting or being affected by other utilities or future construction. Because the bearing area of restrained pipeline is not concentrated in a small area, excavations in close proximity do not pose the danger that could be experienced with thrust blocks. Thrust blocks are commonly used with push-on fittings. This type of fitting can be difficult to install and, when pipe has to be cut in the field, extra time and effort is required to bevel the end of the pipe to enable insertion of the spigot into the fitting bell. This requires powered equipment or special rigging tools. Taking a push-on joint apart can be even more difficult. The mechanical joint, on the other hand, is very adaptable to changes and fabrication in the field. Pipe cut in the field is easily inserted into the MJ bell and the joint is made by tightening some bolts. Disassembling a mechanical joint to make changes or adjustments is simple and straightforward. Can you really eliminate thrust blocks using joint restraint? Based on years of experience, the answer is yes. The use of EBA Iron mechanical joint restraint products and proven design procedures allow for reliable installations that effectively eliminate the need for thrust blocks. 
The use of the mechanical joint enables field adaptability that is not available with all joint restraint products. Pipe can be cut in the field and fittings assembled with simple procedures that allow for the prompt acquisition of materials and completion of construction. All of this combines to provide you with a safe and proven piping system without depleting your resources.